Hello, so out here in the country, here in Pennsylvania, gonna paint this old barn you see here. It's a very early spring. Pretty nice weather today. It's a slight breeze. I think it's almost 70 degrees. Um, the lighting is pretty much overcast. So this is really gonna be more about values than anything else. And I have to decide you know, where I'm gonna put things. So I'm just gonna work on my composition here. The roof um, starts to angle way more like this. Getting the perspective of the roof of these things is very important. I will just hold my brush up to it and bring it back down to my canvas and it usually gives me a pretty good approximation. Now this is, we'll make sure that it comes across pretty evenly, it does, so we're good there. Now in front of this, um, the part of the barn I like is this other structure. And I should figure out my horizon line is probably about there. I should have figured that out first, but I didn't. Um, I think I have the roof on that. Drawn a little bit incorrectly. I'm going to fix stash, take some mineral spirits. Basically, it should be about the same length as that, so it goes to about there. The bottom of this thing is. Um, this smaller structure here it's actually made of cinder block which is in my opinion kind of ugly the top here has some nice um wood planks so i think what i'm going to do is just pretend that they built the whole thing out of these out of this wood here and get rid of that ugly cinder block structurally i'm sure it's very sound but it definitely doesn't make it very artistic. When I'm doing architecture, I usually start with you know, some kind of uh, loose drawing of the uh, structure. if you don't get that right then it's, your whole painting is basically going to fail. It's another little structure right there. So get that in. We're dealing essentially with a one point perspective. Everything, all the perspective lines are going you know toward a point that is off of the uh, panel here. old house back there. We're going to get that drawn in. Should need to make that bigger. That house is going to end up going off the composition there. Um, there's also a couple silos. I'm probably just going to use one. And I'm going to scoot it over right now with the way I'm angled. 
it um, matches up with that, and I don't like that. That's how it is in life, but I'm going to move it over a little bit more. Make it a little taller than what it is, just because I don't want it lining up with the roof. And there is some other structures back in there, but I'm going to ignore that. The ground plane goes there, and then there's some distant trees. Okay, so I think I got a good start there for the drawing. We can proceed with the actual painting now. Okay, so first thing I want to do is identify what is probably my darkest value in this painting. And it's this old, I think it's this opening in here. There's also some smaller openings in there, but um, it's definitely up here. Now, I painted this barn before many years ago, and it was a bit more intact than there were still some of these openings, but not like it is now. Um, I don't know if I like that much dilapidation as we have going on here. So I might fix it back up slightly. Other thing is that I'm going to go with a little bit of yellow ochre to make the paint just slightly lighter in value, maybe a touch of white too. Because um, it's a little hazy out, there's quite a bit of atmosphere out here. And I wouldn't mind implying that. Let's go with a little Viridian. Making a black from Viridian is going to uh, raise the value of your black um, just a little bit, which can be great for outdoor um, atmospheric effects. And I think I'm gonna leave Leave it at that as far as showing the dilapidation. Okay, next, I'm gonna go for that old red wood that's on the outside. A lot of texture to that wood, but I want to test the value first. That's too dark. Let's try this. Gotta make sure I squint at the scene too. I might have a little too much paint there. That's good to at least start with. I might have to adjust that value later, but I think I have a pretty good starting point. The detail, I'm just going to ignore it for now. I'm just, I just want to get that tone down. Also, uh, before I continue, let me tell you about my colors quick. Uh, titanium white, cad yellow light, cadmium orange, yellow ochre, transparent red oxide, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, Burnt, um, I'm sorry, ultramarine blue, 
viridian and chromium green oxide. I will use uh, more colors in this on my palette in different painting conditions, but um, this is a fairly subdued scene. There's not a lot of color going on in here, so I didn't uh, go crazy with adding a bunch of paint that I knew I probably would not use. Sounds like we got a motorcycle or something coming here. This is a nice, quiet country road. Uh, looks like that's gonna change at least for a minute here. And next I want to get the color of this structure here. And as I said, I'm just going to ignore that cinder block. Well, here comes the dirt bike thing again. Some guy out having fun. Hope he's hope he's not gonna have too much fun. <laughs> he could be uh, riding back and forth all day. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, uh, do me a favor and uh, hit the uh, like button below, the thumbs up. And if you don't like it, you can hit the thumbs down. Got a few people doing that here and there. I think it's inevitable. I actually consider that a bit of a trophy because it means I'm getting more views. Your uh, relatives always, always tell you your paintings are good. But when you get out into the general public that you hear the um, real feedback. So, but hopefully you like it. Also, um, If you could subscribe, that'd be awesome too. YouTube likes that, more people see it, and it helps me to uh, continue to 
want to make these videos. Of course, if nobody would watch them, I would stop making them. But uh, as long as I know people are watching them and enjoy it, then I'll try to keep making them. Blender painting is always fun and it's really good practice. I've been doing it for years. Um, I used to do the competitions like Plinner Easton and all the big ones have won some awards there, but kind of backed off of that over the years and just doing my own thing. Okay, so we have uh, some of the barn established here. Now the sky is a very, it's a fairly bright overcast here. So, got to decide, I should probably block some of that color in on the sky because of its ambiguity. I'm gonna take some white and thin it down a little bit. I'm gonna go with some Viridian little bit of alizarin permanent and some yellow ochre some blue in there in spots. Might make some modifications of this sky later, but just want to get a tone in right now. Now, the distant trees, they come up over the barn. I'm going to shorten them. And the reason why is because I think it's going to uh, show in more of the outline of the barn, being that this is definitely a more value-based painting than anything else, I think it's gonna make for a stronger composition. Okay, for those background trees, let's try some ultramarine blue, some alizarin permanent, some ochre to tone it down a bit. It's a pretty thin mixture. I make them a little cooler than what I'm seeing them out here because I think it'll be a more interesting uh, painting that way. Plus, since I'm making them smaller and setting them further back, that'll uh, definitely make sense. Okay, there is some green in here, and it's back there too. I have to decide if I want that green in there or not. I have this kind of personal aversion toward um, green grass and bare trees, which is a way of going on here. Now that's accurate for spring. I just don't know if I like it or not. Um, then there's some red grass there, but actually before I go further with that, I'm gonna play with this um with this barn a little more.
if you're wondering where I am, I'm actually in uh, South Central Pennsylvania. Um, the name of this road is called Tapeworm Road, believe it or not. I don't know if I'd ever want to live on a road named after a uh, disgusting parasite, but um, there it is. So, full disclosure there. And I think it's named that because it is an interesting road. It does a lot of winding and turning and everything. So I guess they, whoever named it, definitely had a sense of humor. That's all I can say. Just can imagine filling out your return address. Um, when ordering something off of uh, Amazon. That would be kind of kind of comical. I'm just going over this previous transparent layer with some slightly more opaque paint. I'm going to leave some of that undercoating show through just to imply um, the structure, the, um, the texture, I should say, of what was there. Clean my brush off and I'm going to take some of this dark and just uh, do a pull down, wipe my brush, pull it down, wipe my brush. Just keep doing that. Sometimes I might be able to get a few strokes out of it before I have to wipe my brush. But if you do too much, then you get that. You pollute that dark area up there. And if you do that, just go back in, grab some of this original dark, and paint some back in. And uh, make it a little more interesting than what it is. I'm going to pull this texture down even further than what I'm seeing there. So it's just going to give it a more interesting look. And while plenary painting overall is note-taking for me, if I have the opportunity to um, improve on something, I can do it without destroying the original um, you know, intent of why I'm out here, then I'm going to do it. Okay, so let's go in and strengthen some of that up there. I'm going to switch. Oops, I dropped the brush. Let me make sure all my equipment's on. Sometimes my recorder turns off when I kneel down like that. Um, take my palette knife. Let's go some cad red. Ultramarine blue. A little bit of white, a little bit of ochre. I'm going to test some of that on there. That's pretty good. So I have that color in our paper towel here. And I want to remix some of the uh, this dark in here. I really want to try to get it how I'm seeing it. I don't just want to put in any old black I can mix up. I really want to nail that, the value and the feel of that black in there. Darks are some of the most uh, difficult and determining 
things you can have in your painting. If you don't get a dark right, then that can affect all of your painting. So I'm going to be a bit tedious about this. I really want to get that value and that tone. If I go in there with a uh, just a full strength black, or let's say I just put lamp black or ivory black in there, which I don't use, um, but if I did, it just would not wouldn't look like I was there. I think one time a famous artist said once you get the darks blocked in then you can let the the janitor finish the rest of the painting. I don't have a janitor but I guess this guy did. Somebody in a vehicle, I think, spotted me. Oh, they were just turning around good. I don't mind company, but I've had some very talkative company before, and you're definitely up against the clock when you're out here. I don't even know if this part of the structure could stay up on its own <laughs> like this. Okay, so now Gonna go with the brush and just do some refinements here. Paper towels. Okay, so there's also this, um, you know, this is old weathered wood, so it has this lighter, um, kind of cooler tone in here, especially up in this spot.
It is a beautiful day out here though. One of the things that really makes these um, barn paintings on an overcast day is just these little shadow areas here. So I definitely like to get those dark accents in. One brush that I wish I would have brought along was my badger hair brush. I did not, so I feel a little bit handicapped here. So I really like it for doing these little lines on these barns like this. Let's see if I can pull this off with a uh, big fat bristle brush. What I could do is try using the palette knife for that. Okay, on the side here, there's this um, kind of ambiguous neutral tone. Just gonna kind of blend that in there. I'm gonna have to repaint those darks. Okay, so for the sake of um, what you want to call it, uh, correctness or being able to really measure out the um, values correctly, I think I'm going to have to put in that green grass that I'm not always a fan of putting in this time of year. And I'm putting this on, I'm mixing in some transparent red oxide, some yellow ochre. The uh, key with green grass or anything green really out in nature is to um, make sure you have it somewhat neutralized. A lot of people just want to throw in some pure chromium green oxide or something like that. And that's just not going to do it. It's going to wreck it because the green that comes out of your tubes, even if it's sap green, is usually not nearly as intense, or, or is way more intense, I should say, than the green 
you're seeing out there in nature. So like this viridian, you never want to stick like viridian down because that's just way too cool. So you really have to uh, neutralize it quite a bit with some kind of red. Um, you can use orange, you can use like cad red, yellow ochre, transparent red oxide. The earthier reds are going to neutralize you, you know, pretty fast. Actually, any red will. They uh, have some of the uh, earth um, plowed up here. Let's see what that looks like. That's way too intense. Let's knock that down with some ultramarine blue. A little bit of alizarin. Still too intense. Also, when you're going in... Um, when you're laying your paint down thin and transparent like this, it's also going to really intensify any warms that you have in your paint. So like if you lay down a thin transparent red oxide like I am here, um, it's that transparent red oxide is just going to scream through the mixture. So I'm really having to cool it down. Uh, by the way, if you're... Um, interested in learning more and getting deeper into your painting, um, I offer live online oil painting classes. I do it through Zoom. We meet uh, every Saturday, almost every Saturday. Once I might take one off. Some months have five Saturdays in them. But um, anyway, we get together as a group and we take uh, about four weeks and I take it through a painting from start to finish. We don't paint nearly as fast as we are here because of um, because out here I'm on a big time constraint. But I take it through every mixture of color that I'm using, why I'm using it, how to put it on. And uh, got a lot of happy students. Uh, space is limited, so if you are interested, um, click on the link in the description below and that'll take you to the uh, sign up page where you can get on the waiting list and if the spot comes open I'll let you know about it and you can sign up or you can go to my website um, jasontaco.com and click on workshops that'll take you to the same page the link below in the descriptions probably gonna be a bit easier for you but if you want to go check out my artwork too I'll do that um, we also do uh, a monthly critique session and my students that's become one of their favorite things um, we spent the last couple critique sessions like a couple hours or more and basically what that is is any painting you have that you're working on or any drawing that you want to get some feedback you um, send it to me and um, I give you some uh, feedback thoughts on it and the group will too I keep it anonymous I mean if you want to identify yourself as the artist you know you can but um, I just, you know, keep it anonymous, say, hey, we got this painting here, and here's some things to uh, consider, you know, to improve upon it. I bring it into Photoshop. I used to be a graphic designer, so I can work Photoshop pretty quickly, and so I will, um, you know, 
a lot of them I bring into Photoshop and I'll show you exactly, you know, what you can do to uh, make it better. Um, and we also do a monthly Q&A session where you can basically ask me any question you want to. And that's all benefits of being a member. Uh, by the way, all the live sessions are recorded. So if you can't uh, make it to the live session, no problem. You can watch it later. And I also, the painting that we work on in the class, I actually do that painting again completely on my own because it's a little bit different teaching. Um, you know, painting while I teach versus painting how I normally paint. And so I will do the painting um, on my own, record it, and you get to watch me do it from start to finish with commentary. So a lot of benefits. But anyway, if you're interested, check it out. I'd love to have you there. Okay, so I cleaned up my palette a little bit. Good, how you doing? Good. Are you doing painting? Yep. Cool. Do you just go around and do it? Or somebody pay? Do you get paid? Oh, uh, no, I make a living at it. I'm in uh, galleries all across the country, and I teach too. Cool. So, got a YouTube channel. This is going to be on YouTube, actually. And so, yeah. Depends on how big they want it, um, but uh, my paintings go anywhere from uh, five hundred to twenty thousand. Oh, really? Yep. So. I have I have an old house and farm down the road here. Oh, do you? Our our house is built right around the 1750s, 1760s. Oh, no kidding. Where's your house at? Newchester Road. Okay, I'll have to check that out. Where's a New Chester Road? I'm not. If you follow this road all the way out, uh huh, going this way, yep, you come to a T, yep, Plum Run Road, yep, make a right, you'll come out there where the mill is at the creek. Okay. Turn left. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, neat old structures around here. Yes. So when was your place built? Right around 1755. Okay. I have a book on the house and stuff. Oh, neat. That somebody did a bunch of research for. Those. Okay. I had to plant some in shade. So I've got a bunch of scratch over it. You can kind of see. Oh, wow, that's neat. As well, did you redo the roof late, late, recently? We did, we did all the. I repointed the house and we redid the roof. Okay. Nice. So, how long have you lived there for? Uh, it was in my family. Um, okay. We live there now for. We we'll actually live in the house for like maybe six years. We've owned it for about ten years. We worked on. We probably worked on it for ten years before we moved in. Okay. And then it was in my family. Since I haven't lived there since gotcha. the like maintenance guy. Gotcha. I'm not real sure. Okay. Yeah, and I always uh, usually it's a situation like that. I want to stop in and hi. Can I paint you? Because know, yeah, yeah, right. you get some people like, oh, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> and. Yeah, the, so far, I haven't been shot doing this, and I'd like to keep it that way, but... <laughs> the only picture I have of our house is, uh, they came around with aerial, the aerial people came around with the, every so many years, they'll pop in and say, hey, we got, we're going through our inventory, and the oldest thing we have on books till we get, they throw it away. I think we have a, we have an aerial shot, like, from the 19, like, 65, 69. Okay. And that was the oldest they had left. They seem to be popular then. I see like a number of businesses in that. They seem to have these aerial shots from back yeah. in the I 60s. They stopped in one day and said they were, they were deleting a bunch of their archives and that was the oldest thing. Give you one more chance to buy. Gotcha. Gotcha. So did you end up buying it then? We did buy one, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was like, that was the oldest house, oldest picture we could find that was like the aerial. And of course, it's in black and white. 
but you could buy it in color too where they would I guess they must paint it like watercolor and then they just kind of match it up to like somebody will come out and match up the colors the way it is right now yeah they got different ways they can do that I know um there is a house in uh, Dover that an old house I painted just on my own and the guy who was born and raised there and his kids were born there came up to me and chatted with me and he said yeah this developer owns it and they want to tear it down and um, you know um, build a housing development it's a beautiful old place and I um, you know so I gave my card and just out of the blue his uh, kids contacted me and I'd done a bigger version of the painting and um, they said you know we'd like to buy this for from you to give to our dad and so I was like all right so I um, you know ended up selling it to them and they gave it to him and which was cool because it wasn't long after that they ended up tearing the house down and putting it up in ugly housing development. So, you know. Yeah, these places here, uh, not many of them around anymore. Yeah, a lot of these barns are gone. I mean, there, there's barns that I, um, I, I'm originally from Minnesota, and I've been here about, you know, 17 years. And there's barns that I've wanted to paint that I never got to, and they, they fell down, they got torn down, right. you know. And some I did paint, and they still, you know, they got torn down, and that's that. Yeah, I think and our barn was built right around the 1900s. Okay. Like we have it in the Adams County Historical Barn National Barn Registry, but it uh, I'm surprised it never burnt down. But I guess uh, we live about a quarter mile off the road, so that probably helps. A lot of the barns in the area there seemed like there was all went through a little kick there for a while. So like a lot of them were getting burnt down from arson. Yeah, I think I remember something about that. Um, I can't remember if I was here or not, but I know I've heard about that before, which is really sad. I, yeah. You know, because you can't replace them. No, they're, you can't. I mean, even our, even our homeowner's insurance, they won't even replace it. They yeah. Replace it with like a Morton building, metal building. Yeah, it, it costs a fortune to replace it, I'm sure, especially yeah. to build it like it was before with the all the original wood and everything. And so. Yeah, that's the thing, too. Like, a lot of the. We know, it's like, when we did our house, our upstairs of our house, like, the roof design. And like the way it was built, it was built just like a barn with like the main beams and stuff. And it wouldn't even, you couldn't even do it like that anymore with with the codes and stuff because it's not even up to a to the code for like the snow load and stuff. Yeah, yeah. One barn that I had painted and it's gone now. The guy told me that um, it was built in the 1700s. He said there's not one nail in that whole thing. It's all pegs. All pegs. Now, and uh, I don't know what happened to it. I just. You know, a couple of years later, I went by there and it was gone. Yeah, and so I don't know if they tore it down or if it fell down or what. I mean, it wasn't in the greatest shape when I saw it, but, um, you know, it was still neat. That's, I, I do more historical Native American work now. And part of the reason why is because, uh, you know, it's, um, these old barns are just falling down. My, my galleries kind of like them, but I was like, well, there's not much of them left, you know, they... Yeah, even this, I remember the first time I painted this, it had more wood on it than it does now. I mean, that one's... Yeah, it's like, it costs a fortune to fix them up then, too. Especially if you want to do it original, unless they do some cheap aluminum yeah. siding, you know. I mean, even, like, ours, ours could do, use a new roof, but it's like, where are you coming up with $20,000 for the roof for? Yep, exactly. You know? And, that, and you know, the barn is like, you know, you got to get the house done first before you can even think about putting money into the barn. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you got to have a place to live first, so... But uh, what was your name? Justin. Justin. Justin I'm. Yeah, I'm I'll just. A, I get home here, so I'll, I'll send you a, a message or whatever email and get sure. your address. You can get a chance. You can stop by, check it out, drive down to the driveway, whatever. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. How long will you be out here today? Oh, about another hour-ish or so. How long have you been here today so far? Probably an hour. Okay. You know. So you got that far in an hour? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been doing this for a long time, so I can, a lot of times I can get a, if, I mean, this is architecture, so it takes a little longer, but, you know, if it was non-architecture, I can get them done usually in an hour, yeah. so, cool. and some of them you have to, because the light changes so fast. Yeah. Overcast light's a lot more stable. Um, are you videotaping yourself doing it, or are you yep. taking of it? No, I'm, I'm recording myself, because I put these on uh, YouTube also, and, you know, people watch them and that, and so, so that's, uh. Something, I, something else I do, so. Is this all you do is paint? 
Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Yep. Cool. Yep, it's, uh, love doing it. So, I mean, it's been, been, you know, a little slow with COVID and all that stuff. One of my big shows, I, I was featured artist last year at the biggest wildlife art show in the world. Yeah. This year it was canceled. Oh. So, last year it, we had it right before COVID hit, so... That was the only reason we got away with it last year. But, uh, yep. Yeah. Well, it was good talking to you. All right, sounds good. Look forward to hearing from you. So that was interesting. Uh, had a nice conversation with that guy. I wanted to uh, kind of get back to painting for two reasons. Number one, my camera um, likes to shut off all by itself after a certain period of time. I'm amazed it kept going. I was just waiting for it to click off at any moment. Um, and I only have so much battery in my camera. But um, the other reason, too, is that I just wanted to, uh, you know, keep painting. <laughs> so, just kind of had to keep doing it. I would love it if I could find a decent camera or camcorder that has a battery life that's more than an hour and doesn't overheat easily outside in warmer weather if any of you guys know of something like that let me know i'm using an old canon 7d and it works but um there's definitely some limitations to it and one is that it likes to uh start to overheat even today it was overheating i had to stop for a little bit In fact, it's telling me it's uh, on the verge of overheating right now, and it's only like 60 degrees out. It's pathetic. Um, but the other thing, too, is the battery life. I know camcorders, apparently, they're uh, less prone to overheating, but they don't have much of a battery life, like one hour. And I usually go over an hour when I'm doing a painting, especially when I have... Um, people coming and talking to me so if you know of any <laughs> I, I've tried to do some research myself but haven't had much luck so if you know of any uh, cameras that work better uh, please comment below that would be awesome because I've recorded myself and then had the battery die part way through and you know with this, it's not like I can just stop and come back and do it the next day. It's kind of an all or nothing deal. I'm gonna try to put in a little bit more of a strong red in here just to tie it in a little bit more with the uh, barn back there.
Okay, get some more paper towels there. Okay, so all my white, well, almost all my white is covered up. Forgot about that guy up there. And I got the roof of the main barn too to cover up. I was going to say once all my white's covered, then I can really do some serious value assessment, but I don't have all the white covered up yet. These um, light, almost white colored roofs are kind of tricky to do on an overcast day because some of their local color can be pretty much the same as the sky itself. But you have to squint at it and see, you know, is it darker or lighter than the sky? And it's, it's definitely darker than the sky. So you wanna make sure you capture that value relationship when you're doing this. Okay, so as I analyze this, um, looking at the values and I'm thinking that 
this red is, when I squint at it, this red is too light on my painting. Um, it could be that I have the sky in my painting too dark. I don't know if I want to go any darker with the red in the sky because then I might just kill any, uh, any color in there. I'm going to go a little bit lighter with the sky and I'm seeing some warms in there. So I'm just going to take some titanium white and yellow ochre and lighten up that sky more. I'm going to mix it into this cooler, darker mixture that I previously put down. Okay, so even after I did that, I look at this, the, um, the barn looks too, a uh, little too light in value. I'm out here to get accurate values. So I'm going to darken those values a little bit. The key is to squint at your scene and then look at your painting and just try to capture that overall impression. that really creates some more of a silhouette. And I'm liking this more as I darken it. So I do have one little badger hair brush that I'm using just to get in some of these details. I know I said I was going to leave the cinder block out, but I don't know. The more I keep looking at it, the more I want to put it in. So 
So I'm making a liar of myself, but hey. I guess even cinder block can have beauty to it. Also, uh, if you want to, check out my blog, which is mysketchjournal.com. Um, I have a lot of articles there that uh, you might find very helpful on oil painting and drawing. And there's a link below that takes you there, and I have... Um, Descriptions of the uh, materials that I use, you know, the types of paints and brushes, and if you want to know the colors I typically have on my palette, um, I talk about that there also. And also helpful links somewhere you can uh, get these materials.
There is an opening back there to what's behind. It's kind of neat if you can get that implied in your painting. Let's see if I can put it in there without being too obtrusive. Or too unrealistic. Not sure if I like that or not. I'll leave it. But it might disappear later. I'm starting to get a lot of sunlight now. Okay, scraped off my palette a bit. It's time to try to get this thing done. had an interesting uh, painting session. A gentleman came up and talked with me and told me about his house. That was kind of neat. Overall, it's been a nice, uh, quiet time here. Now I'm laying down um, this green for this grass, taking a more impressionistic approach. I'm not going to uh, try to cover up everything I already laid down, but um, just add some different notes of color, if you will. Can hear some ducks off in the background. Sound like uh, it might be wood ducks. Spring is definitely uh, definitely here. Now, up against uh, the side of the barn, they have some stuff there. I don't even know what it is. I just see these little ambiguous shapes. Um, I don't know if it's a pile of wood or what, but I'm just going to... There, there's also some thin trees growing up here that are kind of blocking my view of it. So I'm not going to try to paint exactly what I think might be there. I'm just going to gently indicate some just some am, ambiguous values if you will
like I said earlier, if you're interested in uh, studying under me, um, go check out my uh, workshops. Click on the link below to sign up on the waiting list. Love to have you there. When there's an opening, I'll let you know about it. We get really in depth. Uh, it's good for all levels too. If you're a beginner, don't worry about it. I've had a number of beginners and it's really helped them. I was a beginner once myself, so. And if you're a little more advanced, but you still need some help, I'd be more than happy to do that. I see a couple more things I wanted to do. It's just about to pack up. There's a fence over here. I think it'd be neat to get that in. And there's a fence here.
Okay, now I think I'll call it done.